Hello, friends, and welcome to your Monday morning edition of the Kings of Anglia Ipswich Town podcast. I hope you weekended well and arrive at this Monday in tip top form. Unfortunately, of course, I can't report that Ipswich Town weekended well. They were lost in the fog at Oxford United, losing 2 1, more ground loss in the promotion race. I am Mark Heath back after a week off. Well, a week off the podcast, I was still working, obviously, if the, the shadowy news quest figures are watching. Um, and I'm joined by my two favourite kings today, firmly my two favourite kings, Andy the Hutchman, Hutch Hogan Warren, and Roscoe the Prospect, the bearded one, the prodigy, the one who can't drive, Ross Halls. Andy Warren, first of all, how are you? How's things? How How is the temperature in household Hutch? Um, boiler issues, Mark. I don't want to talk about it any further. Yes, I don't want to talk about it any further than that, please. But um, boiler issues. Fortunately, though, that's not a euphemism for your wife, as well, is it? We should just stress. Uh, No, it's not. Um, (laughs) You know, it's helping my ginger pickle hoodie, which Ah. is which having done having done a bit of a a rotation of of warm clothing. This comes out on top. So if you want, it's very snugly. Yeah, if you want your pickle ginger, you can. You, they can sort you out with all the all your SEO and your Google ad, ads and all that nonsense. But they can also sort you out with a hoodie if your um if your boiler breaks. So. Are they widely available? I don't know. I'm not sure. Just because we're, well, we're special, we get the, we get the merch. I don't know. Totally well, maybe can answer that. Maybe they should be. Anyway, yeah, absolutely. Get involved in ginger pickle, Roscoe. How's things? How's the temperature in your house? It's okay. Um, I didn't get lost in the fog. Um, did anybody ever watch them? Um, there's a film called The Fog in the 80s, but there was also a film called The Mist, which is a Stephen King novel, and it's mm-hmm. just creatures coming out. And um, I wouldn't say I was worried for the players, you know, creatures coming out under the mist and the fog, but uh, I was just sort of, you know, during the game, I just had that little moment where it's like, oh, their creature come out and nick Sam Morsey or something, but that didn't that happen. Would, that would be a story, imagine that. <laughs> that <would be. laughs> Morsey captured in the in the 85th minute by a, an undead creature of some sort. Fantastic. Yeah. I'd still That'd have be... to give him a player rating, wouldn't I? What do you do? <laughs> was doing well before he was taken <laughs> by the undead. <laughs> right then, friends, before we get into five. the game, obviously there's a yeah, five. There's a there's a lot to uh, talk about around the game and whether it should have been played, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um but first of all, um we try not to go up and down too much on this podcast because obviously with the calm measured voice of responsible journalism apart from me who is prone to hyperbole and in in that fashion friends i want you to imagine that i've got a big red button all right next to me here and it's marked panic andy and ross should i be pushing it should i be thinking about pushing it because it's which town i've lost some serious ground in the race for the top two they're now seven points behind sheffield wednesday with 19 games left. And not only that, Derby County are coming like a bloody steam train. 18 games unbeaten, only four points behind town with a game in hand. Are it's which town going to finish fourth in a three-horse race, Hutchie? Tell me it's not so. No, no good comes from panicking, I would say. So <laughs> so don't no good so don't don't press the panic button because panic panic won't help anyone and panic isn't the way the way out of a problem. But Ipswich Town have got a problem, haven't they? They it's it's uh it's looking problematic. The form the form isn't it's a long way off the, the two points a game that Ipswich were comfortably at. Um they've lost ground, as you say, and they're gonna have to they have to string wins together now. Um we felt like they this felt like a verging on a must win game going to Oxford and um they didn't. And they they, they were poor, very poor. Um so, uh, yeah, I'm not pressing the panic button, Mark, but it's um, it's a good, it's a, it's very concerning. Rostradamus, how are you feeling about things? You famously declared the season to be dead in December last year. Um, obviously, we've been had nothing but positivity around this season to date. But when you look at the table now and you think there's 19 games left, OK, there's a long way to go. But now you're kind of relying on town putting together a serious winning run and also the likes of Sheffield Wednesday having a bit of a stumble. Um, which they're not showing any signs of doing at the moment. How, how are you feeling about things? Yeah, this time last year, I was going into every game when, uh, whatever, into dead rubber pretty much. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm a bit concerned, but I'm not I'm not panicking just yet. Um, it's been a you know poor run of form. Um, you know, the draws and you know the Oxford defeat, you know, on the weekend. But there's, there's still loads of games to be played and... I think we just didn't want to, you know, be boring and just run away with the league. I think we wanted to sort of bring a little bit of, uh, just for us to talk more about, you know, 
uh, up and down. So, uh, yeah, it is concerning. And, I'm, and I understand the town fan base because we've had false doors before, haven't we? Where we're like, you know, oh, are we going to do it? Um, but let's not panic, ladies and gentlemen. Still lots of game to play. I, I think teams will drop points. But annoyingly, Plymouth and Sheffield Wednesday are winning machines at the moment. Um, but mm. hopefully they'll they'll lose at some point. And uh, we'll, uh, but that's the problem. We are now being the... We're now hunting the hunt. No, no, what's the phrase? We're check no, what's the phrase? Work it out. You'll get there. Uh, no, no, no. We'll be here too long. People, people we're, know what we are hunting about. the hunted, as yes, opposed to being what... hunted. Essentially, is, okay, is, uh, what, is what you're saying. Just... You, you're on your way, Rossi. You should just should have just believed in it and gone with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, of course, Town still have to play Sheffield Wednesday at home. That's going to be massive, isn't it? In the in the running. Yeah, yeah. That's a huge. That's a huge game. Um, but. You know what? I, the reasons why I'm not, uh, you might get, I'm not a panicker. I, uh, it's not my, <laughs> not. It's, it's, it's not my vibe generally. Um, and it's not particularly helpful, I don't think. But the reasons why I'm not is because I trust, um, I like the group of players that they've got. And I'm really hopeful that the, the, the new signings um, can click and, and give give everybody a lift. They haven't had a mm. chance to do that yet. Um, two two debuts for Broadhead and, and Clark at, at Oxford. We'll come on to that. But um, I think they're gonna. I think those two in particular, obviously George Hurst too. They're going to be regulars in this team for the rest of the season. And um, I'm hoping that that can that can inject inject something into this. Also, I, I think they're capable of winning of winning runs of games. They've got. Mm, a, a large quantity of the bottom six to play around that Sheffield Wednesday, Wednesday game. Mm. Um, Bristol Rovers in there as well, which is a bit of a, a tough fixture, I think, as well. But um, they've got they've got the tools to build the momentum that they need. But they they need to dig them out, dig themselves out of this um, this run, um, this run. I think, and I'll, and I'll be honest, this Oxford game was was a low in that run. That the, mm. there are draws in there that you can sort of square away. Um, this one not despite the conditions not not so much okay well shall we talk about the game then that's a perfect segue into it uh stewie taught, who's not around today um referred to it as possibly the worst performance under mckenna normally before these podcasts if i haven't seen the game i will watch the highlights but i, I can't find the highlights anywhere i can only think that's some sort of reflection on the actual conditions neither town nor oxford have put them out so i can't i can't <laughs> say not they, no i'm assuming okay. that's because you can't see anything um so Quite before possibly. we get to the game itself actually the, 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 obviously the big question around it the narrative afterwards was should the game even have been completed because it was a proper p super from the pictures you were sharing pictures i saw from rossi and warren it was one of those where you could barely see your hand in front of your face sort of situations and there were conversations around calling it both managers came out afterwards and said they were happy to to play it another day but were told well, if we call it now, I'm afraid the result will have to stand. So how do you feel about all of that? I think they were definitely right to start it, um, even, even even though on the drive into Oxford, the, the fog was very low and very uh, very noticeable on our on our drive in. The Kassam Stadium is probably the worst stadium you could be playing at um, in terms of fog, given that there's a, a completely empty mm. end with no stand where that fog can just come in some bloke was telling Stu that floodlights make fog worse is that true we just accepted that that was the truth um i think that's why you have different fog lights on your car isn't yeah because a normal headlight does make it worse yeah so but we we believed that I've just, <laughs> just, just just that sounds like out. a really interesting conversation though i can imagine you were well into that uh i wasn't involved in it thankfully oh, okay. it was a Stu reported back on it and i was fascinated by to hear that second hand um <laughs> No, I don't think it should have been completed. I think um, I think the yellow ball could have been out earlier than it was. I enjoyed that you, um, that appearing about half an hour in. That was good. I think that could have been there from the start. Um, I think from the start of the second half, um, it was pretty pretty apparent that things had got worse. And if you you just had to look around and see that it was not going to get better, uh, only worse. And it mm. and it did um, in the second half. Couldn't we were sat directly opposite the Ipswich fans, and we, I, I, that stand could have been empty, and and I wouldn't, we wouldn't have known, couldn't make out any people whatsoever. Even like the stewards' jackets by the end of the game had, had gone. Um, spoke to Leif Davis afterwards, and he said he couldn't see Wes Burns. Obviously, Leif Davis is on the left, 
Wes Burns is on the right. So those aren't conditions to be playing a football match in, a, a, a high level, pretty high stakes football match. That's that's not right. So no, I don't think it should have been finished. Um, and there's obviously a discussion about the referee's interpretation of the non seemingly non-existent 75 minute rule. Um, mm which it will frustrate Ipswich, but I don't think that should should completely sort of remove all um, critique of, of how the game was lost either. But um, yeah, the fog shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have been allowed to, to dominate that game. Rossi, you were pitch side as ever. What was it like actually being down at pitch level? How bad was it? It was very bad. It was very bad. Um, you know, the first half weren't too bad, you know, because it was still, you know, sort of daylight, weren't it? But yeah, when you've got a stadium that has four sort of, well, has no protection from just anything because you've got a car park in one of your stands. Um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't believe the lino could see, you know, because I was in the same line in the second half. I was basically right next to where the lino was running up and down. And I was like, if I can't see the line, I can definitely not see over there. So an offside or whatever. So, mm. um, and of course the fans, they, they brought out the cheer, you know, we can't see, uh, you, you know, the rest. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting watch and uh, the tape pictures, what well, it was challenging me and me and Warren, the other photographer, we had a little bit, bit of a laugh at half time saying, yep, this is going to be a, a tough second half getting images. But, um, but yeah, an interesting game to watch through the fog. But as you know, actually said, we still lost the game and there's still things to talk about. You know, it wasn't because of the fog, it was because both teams had to play in this fog. So that's yeah. my that's my take on it. I, I generally I don't know if it's because my a lot of my sporting background is watching and we talked about this last night, actually, the NFL, and they never call games off. Nothing will stop an NFL game other than like we had the other day, a serious, serious health issue with one of the players. But they will play in every weather, whatever. The only thing they'll come off the field for is lightning because obviously that poses a, a clear and present danger to, to player safety. Um, so for me, I'm very much of the, it's the same for both teams, stop moaning, get on with it. Um, and I suppose there is an argument around the fans because they'd paid to watch a game. And I know game day wise, a lot of the guys were saying, I could only see half the pitch. We're having to go on what the noise that was coming from the other stand to kind of gauge what may or may not have been happening. Um, but for me, you know, you know, clearly I wasn't there. Um, and I, I'm a bit gung ho on these sort of things. I say, play on, friends. It's it's the same for both sides. Get on with it. Stop moaning, especially after the game. Um, yes, Ross. Sorry, I, I don't like to interrupt. I'm, I'm a, you know, you know me. Um, I also didn't want to go on back there on a Tuesday night after an hour has been played. <laughs> and, I was like, and that's the real thing. <laughs> yeah, just now, just play, guys. You know, just you know, it's one-one still. I know you can't really see the match, but. Come on, let's just finish the game. We don't really want to come here because it, you know, last time we, I think it was a couple of years back when it was unbelievable rain. I'm sure you were there, Andy, where they literally, the game nearly got a ban because it was so much rain. Thankfully, they they carried on, but mm. I just something always happens at Oxford when we go there. You know, last year the late equaliser, the you know the rain, this time the fog. Oh dearie me! But yeah, I was just got no, just get the game done. I, you know, I was, I was saying to the fans, stop singing about that song. You know, can't see, you know, a thingy thing because it's like that's make, that may make the ref want to stop the game. But thankfully, they they finished the ninety minutes. But yeah, we we did lose. No, I think it, I think it should have been off. I'm I'm quite. I, I I don't think they should have finished that game. I think it's I think it was farcical. Um, it, it wasn't a game of football, not for me. Okay, fair enough. We disagree. Um, farcically, however, Hutchie, they did play the game, and Ipswich Town did lose. Your yep. thoughts on that? Because it sounds yeah. like the uh, McKenna came out afterwards and kind of almost intimated that it was unfair of Oxford to hoof the ball into their box because <laughs> they because no one could see the ball. I don't. I don't think he was suggesting it was unfair for them to do that. Um, but I, I, I think you. I think you now have to. You have to separate the two things. I. I don't think the game should have been finished. I think it was a. a I don't think it was a, a proper football match. I agree with the managers there. Um, but it did finish and that's where you want Ipswich to. And that's where I kind of jump on your train a bit, Mark, because from that point when it is going to finish, it is the same for both teams. And that's how you mm. judge. You then judge the game accordingly. And Oxford dealt with and attacked though, it attacked those conditions better than Ipswich did. And it's not just that second half either. Um, Ipswich weren't on it in the first half when it was better and and playable. Um, 
it wasn't a it wasn't an Ipswich team that we've sort of seen. Paul Cook would be telling you at at points that it's not. I don't recognise that team if that that's mm. what the expression he'd have used. Um, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a good performance from start to finish. Um, but when the fog the fog came down, Oxford attacked the fog, and which sounds ridiculous to say, but uh, but they but they did, and it um and it worked for them. Yeah, you have to change the way you play, sure. You have to play the conditions. And, and the other thing I was really interested with um, post-game is McKenna saying that he hadn't seen Oxford play like that all season. They they really switched things up, didn't they, from having been tonked at, at Portman Road on Boxing Day? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, I think Oxford surprised Ipswich a little bit in the first 20 minutes of the game at Portman Road on Boxing Day as well. Um, so, yeah, teams changed the way they play to, to attack Ipswich. You have to expect that. Um, they went... I think they've been a four-three-three generally um, all the way along. Through, so they switched it up and the the to a back three with um, an interestingly made up midfield of of players popping up in different positions. And um, I didn't think that was I didn't think it was just coped particularly badly with that. I just think mm. I just think they weren't on it um, themselves. Um, because if you look back through this game, and the frustrating part of it is you look back through the game and all the better chances were Ipswich. They conceded two pretty poor goals. The first one in particular was a dreadful goal to concede, which you won't have seen, Mark, because it's been hidden from uh, yeah. it's been it's been hidden from memory. And there'll there'll be three players in there that'll be quite thankful of that because it was it was a really poor goal, really poor goal to concede. But Ipswich had the better chances throughout the course of the game and, and didn't take them, and that's what put them in the vulnerable position again in the second half. Mm. I know in your ratings there were there were quite a few fours being handed out, Hutchie, and only only one seven, which was Sam Morsey. So all round a pretty poor showing. Like I say Stewie said I think it was potentially the worst under McKenna. Mm. And, and also suggested that maybe maybe sides have started to work out town a little bit. Yeah, possibly possibly. I I I would I, I would argue that town just just were poor. Like I don't mm. I don't Oxford obviously posed their challenges, but it those challenges didn't amount to they didn't amount to a dominance of the game and they didn't amount amount to particularly many chances in the game. I just thought town were off it. Um, mm. The fours you mentioned were handed out to the, the three players involved in the first goal conceded, which is one of the worst. It's really poor, really poor defended. Wolfenden, Danassian, both really easily pushed off the ball by Yannick Wilshire. Um and then Burgess found himself just completely no man's land, flat footed, um, easy for Wiltshire just to step past him, um, to poke into the corner. Really, really poor. That 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 goal really angered me. It was it's it's really poor. Just a just an example of um, I think just a, a team not on it on the day. Yeah. And and Oxford are a good team. They're 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 not where they want to be in the league, um, but but they're a good team and they um. That three nil from Portman Road on Boxing Day was a bit misleading in in some ways. In some ways, Ipswich did dominate after scoring the first goal, but were easy winners in the end. But the opening to that game was very, very even, probably going Oxford's way on the um, on the scorecards. Mark, there's one for you, there's one for you to make you smile. Um, before before uh, a nice big jab from uh, from Ladapo rocked them. Um, so. I've got no more boxing. Um, so yeah, frustrating, really frustrating, and, and and poor from town. They need to be a lot, lot better than that. They do indeed. Uh, debuts left, right, and centre as well on Saturday. We're kind of expecting Hurst to start up front, make his full debut, and also we saw Broadhead and obviously Harry Clark returning home, which is a, a wonderful story, which I very much enjoy. How did those guys get on, Rossi? From what you could see, that, should we start with Hurst, his full debut? Um, how did he go? Yeah, you know, if you know, I, I think I was as expected. I think we all sort of predicted he, he'd probably start. Um, you know, he put himself about, which I think is what we're going to expect from him. Um, he did seem a little bit rusty because he hasn't played much football really, even at Blackburn. Mm. You know, he hadn't played much there. Um, you know, produced some you know neat touches. Um, and I will admit, after the game, you know, I was chatting to the you know the KOA army and sort of said, oh, I don't know about this Hurst bloke. But then I, I sort of reflected on it a bit more. And he showed promising, you know, signs. And I think when he's fully up to speed, we've got a player there. Um, mm. He should have scored in the second half. But um, but no, a promising sort of start to life for him. And, you know, he came off the bench, you know, last week. 
against Plymouth, did really well. But yeah, he's still a bit rusty, I have to admit. But um, no, nah, promising sign so far. It's going to take him time, isn't it? As you say, he's not played a lot of football and he's been kind of dropped into the, the heat of a promotion race. Hutchie, what did you make of him and, and Broadhead and Clark, who hit the bar, of course, in the second half? He did, yeah. Um, rusty would be the word I use for her. So he, I, he's got, he's got the attributes. We we know that they've chased him for a long time. His movement looks good. Um, the movement to get onto um, the cross from Burns that he just put wide um, was good. Uh, he should have hit the target though. Um, I do think he looked quite rusty, and um, and that is probably to be expected. Um, what they do, whether they play, let him play himself into into form. Um, and fitness, we'll see. Um, but um, but yeah, he um, he did look rusty to me. Uh, Broadhead, I liked. He came on. He ran with the ball. Town lack and have done for quite some time. Really, sort of throughout League One. Really, players that can dribble. Uh, mm. He, I, I like players that can properly dribble. Obviously, Wes Burns is a is a dribble on the right side, but um, I like him. He can dribble. He can come inside and he attacks the box. Um, so. I feel sure that he will start on uh, on Tuesday night against Morecambe. Um, and Harry Clark, we only saw for a few minutes, but in that time, he, he did manage to hit the bar, um, which would have been wonderful if that had just just dropped dropped in rather than up bounced up onto the bar. So I think he'll start too. Do you think it's inevitable? That we've been talking, haven't we, about the Denaissance and this remarkable story that Genoi's been on and now he's a, a, a every game starter and <laughs> we've all been looking ahead at how he could possibly fall out of the t- the side is that going to happen now that Clark's here are we going to see the end of the Denaissance and to quote Ross Wishart on Twitter the start of the Haravival Haravival no. <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> not, good mark full marks for effort I'm not sure yeah. about that one um uh, that there there have been multiple eras of Denaissance, haven't there? Mm. This is maybe this is just the end of one and a wait to the start of another. But yeah, I feel sooner rather than later. I think that switch will be that switch will be made. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing that struck me, and I, I'm sure you probably had a conversation around this on Friday. The size of the squad now, the man management issues around that, uh, and the people who didn't even make the bench on Saturday. I did a, a brief. Look, jotting down. So those who couldn't even make the bench, Cameron Humphreys, who until recently were having genuine conversations about whether or not he should be starting. Uh, Greg Lee, formerly of this parish, very much a form player at the start of the season. George Edmondson, who, God, half a season ago, the idea that George Edmondson wouldn't even be on the bench would be heresy, let alone even starting. Um, Carl Edwards, we talked about, an X-Factor potentially. Gasana had been KVY, so there's just a few there who, who couldn't even make the bench, Hutchie. Um, is that an issue? Is that a nice problem to have? What do you reckon? Um I think I think it's a nice I think it's a nice problem to have. Um if you look at some of and and be let's be realistic about some of these as well. Some of those that you've read out there, Gasana had mate would not have expected to make that bench. Mm-hmm. There's no way that Kane, Vincent Young and Greg Lee would both have expected to make that bench. Um, and there's no way that both Richard Keogh and George Edmondson would both have expected to make that bench. Thankfully, Eb- Keogh will want to play. I'm sure he will. But I don't think that poses any kind of man management issue for for uh, for McKenna because yeah. Keogh is a man and who can manage himself. I have made, I really hope they sort out that loan to Burton because he's going to really struggle for for meaningful action, I would imagine, from this point on. So I hope they sort that out. Um, Humphreys, I think you can manage. And I, I do think there's going to be an element of switching that bench up a little bit. But I, I would hope at some point they kind of hone in on a preferred 18. But all it's going to take will be one or two injuries, mm. which undoubtedly will happen in the next three or four months. And all of those players will be involved in benches again. Um, so I think I think it's a nice problem to have. It's it's it will require some some uh, like exertion of man management skills from McKenna, but I think he I think he can just about manage that, um, given that the character of those that he's got within that within that group, I would say. Um, mm. And it will only t- it will literally only take one, maybe two injuries, and that whole a lot of those issues go away. Mm. Looking at that 
And you mentioned there um, Hadley and, and potentially exiting to Burton, which would certainly make sense, wouldn't it? Are there any others you think? Could someone like George Edmondson, for example, be looking at potentially going out in January? Or I hope not. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. Um, I, it, George is a funny one of late, isn't he? We, we've not we've not seen much of George for for quite some time. Interested mm. to know why that might might be, but um, I think again, I think you you're one one injury, probably not even an injury away from him being a starter, potentially. Mm. Uh, the, ben- the bench is different. You don't need, if you've got Harry Clark on your bench, you don't need to carry a right back or a centre back. He can play both of those positions for you. That that That's just bench bench play. Um, but I, I, th- I think if, if McKenna made any kind of change to his centre back pairing, Burgess um, or Wolfenden, they would come out of the, they'd come out of the eighteen completely mm. potentially because Donassian's the same Donassian can go on the bench and cover all positions at the back so I th- I don't think not making the bench is necessarily is necessarily an example of you just being miles away from ever playing I think I think players we might have to get used to players coming from outside the 18 into the starting 11 potentially but yeah. in terms of players moving on um I think with with Clark signed, I think Vincent. I don't. Vincent Young's going to struggle to. His versatility might might prove useful, um, but he's going to struggle for starts, isn't he? I can't. I can't see mm. many for him there. Um, so he would be one. I'd maybe. Uh, you never know. You got any Who thoughts knows? on this ridiculous depth, Roscoe, and the, the the kind of man management challenge, not problem, but challenge that it it poses when you've got these players a lot. Well, I say a lot. Some of them. We surely understand that they're maybe not in the, on, on the kind of very tip of McKenna's tongue, but the likes of Cameron Humphreys and George Edmondson would expect maybe to be at least on the bench. Yeah, some of those players, yeah, George Edmondson, I think, you know, as you said earlier, you know, you, you thought, what? Like, de- definitely this time last season, you think George Edmondson's not even making the bench. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, McKenna has got a lot of man management to do here. And I'm sure he, he'll be able to do that. I think. You know, I'm surely some of these players knew this when they signed, but also they're like they want to start. You know, any footballer wants to start, but yeah, I can't. As you said, yeah, Gas and Admi, that needs to be sorted. Vincent Young, he's out contracting to in the summer. You know, I've always liked him, but he's not going to play football, is he? You can't. He's, he's not going to play in front of Janoy, Harry Clark. You know, of course he can play that Wes Burn role if he really wants to. He can play left back if he really wants to. But yeah, McKenna. You know, he, he's wanting these players and he's still got those players there. He's just going to have to, you know, man management, basically, mm. run it. And, you know, you know, it's a great thing to have, but also sometimes having too many players can be an issue as well. Because, you know, as as Annie said, I really do like this squad of players. I think this is, you know, I, I believe in this squad. Um, but, yeah, it's like... It is, yeah. It's it's getting it's getting hard to now choose. Like, oh, who, who is going to be leaving? You know, Con Edwards. You said X Factor, mm. but is he going to play? Probably not. Yeah, it's, it's a good issue to have, but also, it, yeah, I'm, I'm, my mind is just yeah. We're trying to think where you can go, and every week you're like, who's going to be on the bench? You know, Cameron Humphreys missed out. You know, but then next week he'll be back. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Okay. Any other notes from the game? Because I've got a theory I want to drop on you about the whole. It's which town form, which I've done research on on everything. Show me your work in. Drop your theory. Okay, theory. Since town fell apart against Charlton on October 29th, they've played 10 games, League One, not looking at cups. They've taken 14 points from a possible 30 in those games. They've won three, they've drawn five, and they've lost two. So, Andy... Looking at that and the, what happened at Charlton, which was a freakish uh, kind of once in a, a lifetime sort of scenario, but clearly will have an impact on psyche of players. Have they, could one argue, that kind of impact is still lingering? Have they recovered from what happened at Charlton? And could you look at that and go, well, maybe they're, they're a bit fragile still? You can't ignore it. I'd say you definitely can't ignore it because that that was a that was a body blow that afternoon. Mm. Um, 
But I, 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 I don't think. Look, I can't get inside everybody's minds. None of us can. But, <laughs> but, um, but it's still, you, it's still a fun theory to discuss. I, I would say no. I would say it's not. I would say it's not a massive, mm. overbearing um, sort of always on like always present factor in what's been going on recently mm. um the results since then you've got the Cheltenham and the Fleetwood games in there in the league um the conti- which is kind of the continuation of a theme we already saw those two games where they just couldn't work it at home in that time they did they they won really well at Exeter they beat Peterborough in that time they beat Oxford mm-hmm. well on Boxing Day illness and everything combined over Christmas um the Plymouth game was another another kind of freak one at the end but it's I don't know if it's necessarily the Charlton game. I think it's on ongoing issues. They've they've had mm. they've had these those issues were in place already. But it's certainly not. I don't think it's you. You certainly can't look at it and, and ignore it. it. It's 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 um. It's a big part of this season so far. I would say it's a big mm. part of it, and maybe highlighting some issues rather than causing them potentially. Maybe the best example of some issues. I know. I appreciate it's beautifully simplistic, uh, like myself. Well, but that's that is that is the beauty of football, isn't it? Like, yeah, we're we're allowed to be like that. It's fine. And I suppose if you, if you count that actual Charlton game in that run, that would be fifteen points out of a possible thirty-three, um, which is not good form at all, is it, Rossi? Have you got any thoughts on the the dynamics? As have things changed since then? Do you think? Um, I, I get get where you're coming from because yeah, I'm sure it, it takes a while to recover from that because it was a freak result you know i know some people are still going back to that 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 4-4 draw was that the sort of switch on or oh, is this team gonna do it um but yeah that was, that was just a freak result and you know we, we've had some um body blows since then yeah. little boxing reference there for you <laughs> yeah. um you know with, with you know late equalizers late you know goals and stuff like that um but you know i'm sure a lot of these players have had a lot of um moments in their careers where they've had to pick themselves up and go again. Um, but yeah, sadly, this team has had so many different moments like this where they've conceded late goals or, you know, not played well. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good take from you though, my friend. I, think it's a good take. I, I love the way you both kind of respectively told me that's nonsense in a, in a really kind <laughs> no, of... No, it's not, not, it's, not, it's, not, <laughs> not, it's not nonsense. It isn't nonsense. It's, huge, it's, it's a hugely <clears throat> relevant sort of point across the season. I just don't think that it's... Um, I just don't think it's kind of the overarching season ruiner. I don't think it's mm. that. I don't think it's still in everybody's minds. I think they're a strong group of players. I, but but I, 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 I think that will be clear of their minds. I don't think they're that's weighing on them. But it's undoubtedly a a big blow during the season. And, and like you, I, I'm not normally the one chucking out the boxing analogies. But when you take a big blow, it does take a little while to kind of just get back get back going again but I, I i would say the charlton game was more of a more of an example of ongoing issues rather mm. than necessarily just being that massive knockout punch that that's left you kind of staggering around mm. for the rest of the fight um but it's hugely relevant to the to the, the kind of the course of the season mm. okay um in terms of going forward there's, there's 19 games left we'll talk about more come in a minute um, clearly, town now have to be approaching perfection for those 19 games. They've got to certainly go on some sort of run. Two the things they need to, to sort out, Hutchie. We've been talking about defending high balls into the box all season and also profligacy in front of goal, not taking their chances. Are those the two main issues that town have got to sort out in these next 19 games and quick? Yeah, the second one of those is the bigger one, I think, because if they're taking their chances at Oxford and, and yeah, you have to you have to put some caveats in there. Connor Chaplin had a really, really good chance to score with a header from five yards out, but he couldn't mm. see the ball. Um, you can't legislate for that. That's not on him, really. Um, but yeah, taking chances is the issue. And and that's my, my hope is that the, the new signings will just give that energy and that and that ability to do that. Obviously, brought you're looking at Broadhead and Hurst to do that. And I also hope that that could bring the best, best out of Ladapo um, as well. So... Um, 
I think they can still go up automatically. I really, I really do. It's, it's, it's difficult. They've made it difficult. Um, and they're going to have to put together some serious winning, winning runs um, to do that. But I think they've got the players to do it. They, I, I just, that injection of life um, mm. from these new stuff. They've also got those players. It's not like that. We're not sitting here thinking, right, there's seven days left of the transfer window. Go out and, go out and bring in your spark. I think the spark's already here. They just need mm. to ignite it. Do you think, before we move on, Kieran McKenna has had a kind of dream start almost to his, his time at town. Last season, yes, it didn't go, quite go as as planned. But this season, he's been pretty much spot on. Everything he's, he's tried has worked and town have been this fantastic improvement and he's been this calm, considered, really kind of analytical, intellectual force that everyone's kind of loves hearing talk and get on board with. And I know there's a you can't say that he's under pressure because that's nonsense. But this is this, you would you could argue I'd imagine this is the biggest test of him so far, Hutchie. Have there been times in this run or whenever that when you thought actually if he had that again he might make a different decision? Are we kind of seeing that kind of thing now or um, p- possibly? I I think you know he. He, he might think they should have put the ball in the box more against Oxford mm. at the weekend, but they but they attacked. They made chances. It's just they didn't. Maybe, and I'd say he is under pressure, not for his job. That not, his job oh, is yeah. not under pressure, but yeah. under pressure to succeed, and and he'll put, be putting himself under that pressure. Um, but I, I think I've got a lot of faith in him, and and even though he is under this pressure, he's not changed his demeanour at all. That's always a worrying sign when, when managers change their sort of their, their demeanour and the way they speak mm. and the way they're acting. Um, don't feel like he's done that particularly. Um, no, I've, uh, the thing is, I you, you hear a lot about there's no, there's no plan B. Mm. I would argue that plan A is, is working. They're just, for whatever reason, can't take their chances. I think the plan is working. It's the execution of it. And I don't know if necessarily is plan B pump the ball into the box. I don't know if, is that going to be more effective? They're making, they're making these chances. They're just not taking them. And I, it's, it's impossible to say why that is. The players are capable of scoring these chances. They're mm. just not taking them. Um, I, I would argue that plan A is still working for Ipswich and that, and that actually, I don't think switching to some completely different approach to playing football is going to be effective. I don't, mm. I, I, I don't know if that's what you need to do to to succeed. Um, are they more likely to score by by tossing the ball into the box, hopefully, or or um, or by working the ball in the box to make these chances that they're not taking? Maybe it's somewhere in between. Maybe it's some subtle tweaks here and there, and. Um, some earlier changes. I, d- I don't know, but I, it all adds up to me still feeling that this group is very capable of of doing what they want to do this season. Mm. I, I, I do feel that. Um, okay. But but this is a kind of a timely reminder of time sort of running out a little bit and things just getting that little bit further away from them than they, than they would be comfortable with it with it being. Mm. And just I'm I'm just saying. But if the playoffs started today, Ipswich Town would play Barnsley. <laughs> and there's there's all sorts of narrative attached there. Norwood's goal at the weekend. Norwood coming back to Haunt Town. All that sort of stuff. We don't want that. Please no. Um, there's narrative everywhere in the playoffs, isn't there? Like uh, is, yeah. you, you can't move for it. And just uh, that it's like a pea soup of. Uh, I don't even. Is that all about pollution? Pea soup fog. Is that is it about? Is that what it's about? Kind of like, yes, it's kind of smog sort of vibe, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. There's narrative everywhere. If if a playoff if a playoff campaign is incoming, there's McGoldrick, there's Norwood, there's Bolton, um, everything. Hmm. Okay. Uh, before we move on to Morecambe, one more thing by way of news we should mention: Matt Penny has come back from Motherwell, and he's gone straight out on loan to Charlton. Um, can't technically really call them promotion rivals, but he'll be playing in the same league, Rossi. What do you make of that? Yeah, good move for him. Um, did it really well at Motherwell, of course. You know, one player a month, multiple time there, supports player a month and all that. Um, yeah, he's not. he wasn't going to get back into the town side with Lee Davis and Greg Lee and co. Um, yeah. 
I know Hutch probably have a different opinion on this, but I didn't think he was very good, to be honest. Um, not as bad as Miles Kenlock, as everyone knows. But um, it, I think there is a player in there, Matt Penny, because he, you know, he, he has done well before at Sheffield Wednesday and stuff like that. Um, and he's proven at Motherwell, and I'm, I'm sure he'll do a right at Charlton. Um, I know they're, you know, they're they're a weird team as well, Charlton. They're weird. They've got some good players there, but I don't know. They just they're up and down all the time. But mm. no, best of luck to him there and. That is pretty much probably the end of his town career. I know Andy's done a, a great story this morning. Um, read that on our websites. Welcome. Really great, Steve. that one. Great, great, absolutely great. fantastic. Yeah. Very good. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got to say about Matt Penny. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Hutchie, you've written a great story. A tremendous, fantastic and engrossing, compelling read for those who have not seen it. Um, that's the end of Matt Penny at town, isn't it? We're not going to ever see him barring utter disaster. We're not going to see him pull on a, an Ed Sheeran sponsored town shirt again. No, it would be it would be a surprise. Um, it would be a surprise. He's out of contract in the summer. Town do have an option on him, so they can control his his next movement to an extent. Um, but but no, I would say that's very unlikely um, that he that he would play for Town again. I thought he was capable at times. I hmm. he was up he was up and down. I'm not going to go overboard about it, but I thought I thought he was decent. I, um, he's got he was kind of a bit a bit Luke Garberty. For me, like you could have some good games, and then others where he doesn't look like he's able to defend particularly well or track runners in behind. Um, but he had some moments like that, like the second half of Luke Garbutt's time, I'd say. Um, I'd d- describe him as capable, but town need more than that now, they need more than sort of capable, capable players, and that's you can see that by what they did in the summer, they spent a million pounds plus on a on a left back from a Premier League club who who kind of maybe puts Penny into perspective a little bit. And, and with Greg Lee as well, with the kind of added muscle and defensive ability that he's that he's got, that that's something that Penny didn't have. So um big upgrade in the summer and the writing was on the wall for him from there. If you were not watching on video, Ross was not having the Luke Garbutt comparison, were you, Rossi? <laughs> no, but <laughs> As I said, there's one or two games I thought we've got a player in him, Matt Penny. But then I, was, well, I don't know what game it was, but I thought, oh my god, this is bad. Definitely it might have been you... Bolton. What was it? Bolton away because he, he, yeah. in McKenna's third game, he he was really poor and didn't play again for three months after that. Yeah, but but yeah. Okay, right. Let's move on. It's uh, it's Monday morning. Town have got another chance to kick it in the goal and go again tomorrow night against Morecambe, which is probably what you want after a defeat like that at the weekend. A chance to put things right and start a run. Let me reel off some stats before we talk about Morecambe. Morecambe are 21st in the table, but they've got two games in hand. That's because the last two games they were due to play have been called off, postponed by the weather. So when they arrive in Suffolk tomorrow, they won't have played a game for two and a half weeks. Um, Before that, however, they'd won two games in a row. They won. uh, They beat Chelton 2-1 and Burton, struggling Burton 5-0. And of course, Town beat Morecambe two one at Morecambe at Tyson Fury's hometown back in October when they had the luxury of being able to uh, give up a Connor Chaplin penalty miss, I recall, and still won two one. Um, Hutchie, that big button I had that was marked panic, I pushed to one side. You told me don't panic, Heath. Nothing, no good can come of panic. I've got another button here which is red as well, which says must win. Am I am I pressing that one? Yeah, you can press that one. Yeah, go on. Give press that, that give that a little press. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course it is. Um, Ipswich need to win games and they need to string them together. And it, yes, they've won three in a row, but you can't. It's it's Morecambe at Portman Road. All the respect in the world to Morecambe, but Ipswich Town have better football players than than Morecambe have got, and they need to show it and they need to win um, for the table for for the fans, for their own confidence. It's it's a huge game for them and they obviously they obviously need to win it. Hmm. Roscoe, it's a must win game. What do you do with the team? Because there's we've already talked, there's so many options. Is this is this the game that you, you stick Harry Clark in, for example? What do you do up top with Hurston and Ladapo? Does Broadhead start? Yeah, I think you start Harry Clark because um yeah he's cup tied isn't he for for Saturday for the Burnley game so he's straight in to make his mm. um full debut his Portman Road debut that's gonna be that's gonna be great he, he was already I think um 
I think he's a somewhat a fan favorite already because of that connection. But even you know during the warm up when he came on and in the last few minutes when he had a throw in, he was straight away like with the town fans go, come on, come on, let's go. You know, you know trying to pump up the crowd. Um, so yeah, he he, he starts to me. Um, do you know what Broadhead? Start him. Why not? You know, bring him in. Um, I thought he was lively when he came on. Um, and a man, I think he will actually take a shot. That's one thing I get annoyed about this team sometimes. Don't take a shot. Just have a sh- shot. Definitely hmm. with the fog. Come on, just take a pop. That their goalie may not even seen it. Um, but yeah, Broadhead to start for me. Um, maybe start Ladapo, maybe. But then hmm, it's a tricky. Oh, once again, you got you got a you got a debate in aren't you? Where in terms of like. You know, Hurst did right when he started, but then Dadapo, there's always that talk. Is he better when he starts? He's more fired up. I know um, Andy has still always said that on the boot room, you know, sometimes Ladapo is more fired up if he starts. So do you start Ladapo in this one? Do I would. Know, yeah. I would. Yeah. I'm definitely starting the starting Dapo in this game. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I would, but I don't think they will. I th- really? I, I, yeah, I, I think I think Hurst might. I've got a feeling they might try and get, play Hurst into, into form. Um, mm. but but I would start Ladapo, and I I would absolutely start Broadhead and Clark. I think I think you need to that. I think you could get the fans into the game immediately by doing that, um, mm. and just just build up a bit of a bit of an atmosphere. Fear is that is there some kind of nervous atmosphere inside Portman Road again? We've we've become used to that. I don't think there will be, but you, I think you can um, show some real intent. I think there by giving two two first starts out. Um, to two, um, to two good players. What would you say is is the top is the best team? It, it, all things being equal, now Hutchie, everyone's fit. Who would you who would you say is the, is the strongest starting eleven for town? I've not seen Broadhead and, and Clark play for it for mm. Ipswich really, but I I don't know off the top of my head. Walt, Walton probably probably Clark, Wolfenden. We had this chat on Friday, um, on Friday I think, and Wolf Wolfenden and another. Um, yeah. Leaf Davis, obviously, Morsi and Evans, Burns, Chaplin, Broadhead, and then one of the strikers. Um, mm. But we'll see. Okay. So how how are you actually feeling about this game then, Hutchie? We said it's a, it's a must win. Uh, it, it's a good thing though, isn't it, to have a game like this at home against a, a side that have been struggling, not played for a couple of weeks. This is the kind of ideal game you'd want to come into, isn't it, after a, a loss be. like that at the weekend? Well, if it well if it's not, then then there's there's an issue, isn't there? If if they're yeah. not, I I would love I would love nothing more than to see them go out there and put in a real real good hmm. three three nil dominant victory in this game, and and they're more than capable of doing it. Um, I think they'll win. I think they will win. Um, and that and that will be re- a really kind of a good a good way to go into a sort of no. Um, low risk high reward game with Burnley at the weekend which could I think could be really, actually if they can do what they need to do in that Burnley game regardless of the result could be really important to the season mm. so um no I think they'll be I think they'll win this game on on Tuesday what's your prediction then uh 3-0 ooh smoking rossi you was confident well get the panic button out if they do lose um because <laughs> I'm sorry to say that will be I won't say a disaster, but you think, bloody hell, can't beat Morecambe at home. Um, but then Morecambe, I know they're, I know they're, you know, twenty first in the league. But they're, they're no mugs, you know. When we played at their, their place, you know, we got over the line, we got the win finally. But these sort of teams that they, they you know, that's going to be a big day out for them, I'm sure. You know, again, although Tuesday night, that's a long way to go for them. Of course, mm. it's a rearranged game because we got to the third round of the FA Cup because this was, I think, was going to be played on the seventh. Um, as you said, they're unbeaten since there, but they're not had a game for two weeks with, because of the weather. And I think the Cambridge game got postponed because their one of their stands was not safe or something. Um, but it's, it's, as you said, it's a must win. Um, I'm going to go for a win. Although I've looked at their results, they don't really get beaten heavily. Um, they got beaten 4 0 by MK Dons back in August, but since then they've lost you know 2 1 against Plymouth, they, they drew against Pompey 1 1, Derby 1 1. Um, they beat Barnsley in October one nil. Um, mm. So, but I would like us to score a few goals. I think that's what we need. I think some of the players need some confidence. Really, maybe Hurst to get his first goal. Um, you know what? What? What scenes will be if Harry Clark scores on his on his Port Monroe debut? Um, I'm gonna go two one, two one win. 
I think we'll be 2 0 up and Morecambe will just score it and it'll be a cagey end to the game. So a, a 2 1 win. But, you know, I think Morecambe will be a challenge. And uh, as I said, I don't think they're, they're mugs. Of course, Connor Ripley, I'm sure, will get a bit of a, a few little um, shouts to, to his end because of his um, comments last time we played them. Um, but yeah, they're no mugs, Morecambe. Of course, I wouldn't say they're fighting for the eyes at the moment because there's still a lot of games to play. But um, yeah, it'll be an interesting game on Tuesday night, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Ross bringing out his inner Mick McCarthy there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no mugs. There's no easy game. Uh, yeah. So three nil, two two one. I'm going to say two nil. I don't know if it means anything, but I had a dream about Freddie the Dapo scoring a goal last night, um, and it's very rare that I dream about football uh, and also can remember what I've dreamt about. Um, so I don't know if that means anything, um, but I will be putting all the money that I have on Freddie the Dapo scoring tomorrow night. Speaking of which, Hutchie, have you got a million pound pick for this game? Uh, yeah, I'll put all of it on Freddie Ladapo to score <laughs> to score a goal. Um, I haven't even thought about it, which is the beauty of this. I will put some money on Freddie Ladapo to score. Actually, I'll put half a million pounds on it. Half a milli. I'll give you. I'll yeah. give you seven to one. All right. Thanks very much. Half a million, Freddie Ladapo. It's been seen in the sleep of Heath. Ladapo scoring a goal. Oh, Rossi. Sorry, I'm once again being a very polite young man. Um, also, Morecambe's away record is dreadful, actually. Um, is it? Yeah, one win, four draws, seven defeats. The one win was back in September against Forest Green. So, uh, yeah. Don't know, yeah, don't know what you'll take that, whatever. But, uh, yeah, not a great away record for them. So, yeah. All roads lead to a town win. Although, of course, as a football fan, you hear that stat and you think, well, that's going to end at some point. <laughs> um Hutchie, let's play guess the, the guess the shirt behind your right hand shoulder. Um, you might, I think you might I think this might might be a struggle. It's normally a struggle for me anyway. Um so for those not watching, it's it's red and white stripes, are those? It's hard to tell. Um yeah. Yeah, there are stripes. And it's got a weird kind of situation around the, the, the collar. Oh Hummel, okay. I know I think I know this. It's I can't, it's Dutch. It's Danish. Is it du- it's Danish. Danish, Danish. Yeah. yeah. Alberg. Alberg. Copenhagen. Alborg. That's just a Danish city, Mark. <laughs> what? <laughs> just, just shouting out cities. <laughs> Copenhagen. <laughs> That's A A B Alborg. Very nice. You can have an extra point if you can tell me which player Ipswich signed from this club in the past. Uh, Thomas Galso? No. Thomas Gardso. Oh, oh wow. What's Two going on for us? What's going on? Well done, Ross. Fantastic. The strike, that's that's the reason why. Strike is that, a, is that another new addition, Hutchie? Yep. Just sit on yep. the rail. Seven pounds. Well Lovely. spent. Move it on. Trade trading stocks. Make some yeah. money on that. That might, that might stay for a little bit. I quite like it. Superb. Right then, friends. Is there anything else to discuss um, before we take our leave and start previewing the Morecambe game tomorrow? Anything else to mention? Rossi, what have you got coming up? The ladies played at the weekend, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Um, 2-1 win. They just got over the line against London Bees. A very cold um, the hive. Um, but yeah, there'll be attractive girls talk later in the week. Um, Blue Wilson and Natasha Thomas, who scored her 10th goal of the season. So uh, look out for that on our platforms whenever that's out. And you've also got, and I don't know if we should be revealing this, but you've also lined up your second, after the success of the first one, Matt Holland in pitches, which was mm. brilliant, by the way. And you know how much I enjoyed that because I told you personally in gushing terms. Um, you've also got the, the second in the series lined up, haven't you? Can we talk about that? That's coming to a screen near you soon. Yes. Um, let's not s- confirm it just yet, just in case stuff happens. You just never okay. know. But yeah, it, it's, a, it's a big one. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I've got a few others lined up and... Uh, yeah, hopefully everyone enjoys it and just something different, you know, looking at old pitches and stuff like that. Um, as you know, I'm a big, big man of, you know, pitches and stuff. Don't know where I'm going with this. But a yeah, big can't man of pic- a big man of pitches. Yeah. I can't I can't mm. believe, mate, you, you managed to track Ballant Biner down. It's fantastic work. I know. Of course, um, can't wait for it. <laughs> you have you've re- you've if you when this one happened, you've reeled in a big fish here. It's a big mm. yeah. It's a it's a big town fish. Yes. Outstanding. So look out for that. Hutchie, anything to mention? No other business. Fair enough. We're coming up on an hour then, friends. Uh, your Monday pod is in the bag. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. We've talked a lot around Ipswich Town. We know there's a chance to go again tomorrow night. If you have enjoyed the show, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes because uh, that helps us greatly visibility-wise in the charts. It's also good for our egos to see praise on there, particularly mine. Um, Rossi, do you want to do you want to 
we had some success with you trailing Ginger Pickle. Do you want to shout um, out Ginger Pickle as a sponsor? Yeah, they do marketing and stuff. So uh, check them out. Contact Ginger Pickle for all that stuff. Google ads, websites, you want to improve it, go for it. There you go, Tony. Money well spent. Uh, and also Manscaped. Use the code KOA at manscaped.com for 20% off and free delivery on all that excellent club. Get yourself trimmed and indeed clothed and smelling nicely through Manscaped. Right then, friends. Ipswich Town, unfortunately, were lost in the fog at the weekend. They've got another chance to go again tomorrow and start what we hope will be a 19-game winning run, which takes them directly up uh, as, as a champions of League One. We'll see what happens. Um, enjoy the game if you're going tomorrow. If you're not, follow it all with us. And we'll be back later on this week to break it all down. Enjoy. <laughs>